So we want to evaluate the derivative of sine of x using the limit definition of the derivative. So we want to evaluate d by dx of sine of x using the limit definition. And just as we did in the previous video, the limit definition of the derivative is the limit as h approaches 0 for f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. And something that we need to know in order to evaluate this, uh, this derivative is we need to know how to add up signs. So whenever it is that you have sine of a plus b, it's not equal to, simply not equal to sine of a plus sine of b. But rather it is equal to sine of a cosine of b plus sine of b cosine of a. It's a little messy, I know, but this is something that you should be familiar with from uh, a basic algebra class. And what we'll be doing in order to evaluate this is we want to determine what our f of x plus h is. So first thing we want to do is we want to define our f of x plus h. f of x plus h is equal to sine of x plus h, which using this right over here will become sine of x cosine of h plus sine of h cosine of x. So this whole mess right over here is our f of x plus h. So what we can do now is plug this into our formula where we're going to take the limit as h approaches 0 for sine of x cosine of h plus sine of h cosine of x and then we want to subtract off our initial function which is simply sine of x so minus sine of x and then we divide this entire thing by h and if you don't mind what it is that I want to do in order to evaluate this and make things a lot easier on us is I want to split this up into two different fractions so if I were to split this up into two different fractions I want to join the terms containing sine of x. So I want to join this, I want to join this, but I want to exclude this. So what I want to do is rewrite this as the limit as h approaches 0 for sine of x cosine of h minus sine of x over h. And now because they're all over a common denominator, what we can do is simply split this up into different additions. So the leftover term simply becomes whatever is left over, this portion right over here, sine of h cosine of x over h. And we know that the limit of the sum is simply the sum of the limits, so we can split this off into two different limits altogether. So this becomes the limit as h approaches 0 for sine of h cosine of x over h. And what we can do in this case right over here is we can factor a sine of x out. So if we factored a sine of x out of this function, we would be left with cosine of h minus 1 over h. And this is one of those limits that I mentioned in one of the previous videos that we can take for granted and assume that it will go to 0. Cosine of h minus 1 over h is the same as cosine of x minus 1 over x. This was one of the limits that I had discussed in the trigonometric limits videos. And we can assume that this entire term goes straight to 0. So all we'll be left with is limit as h approaches 0 for sine of h cosine of x over h. And this is another one of those limits that I had discussed in those videos where we can assume that sine of x over x as, a, as x approaches 0 goes straight to 1. The exact same thing happens right over here. 
So this goes straight to 1, and all we'll be left with is cosine of x. So this proves that the limit as h approaches 0 for f of x plus h minus f of x over h for sine of x is simply cosine of x.